Hello. Merhaba. Güneşli Antalya'ya hoş geldiniz. <gülüyor> Tüm organizatörleri, teknik ekibi, bizzat Behiç ve Antalya Winter League teşekkürler for having us here. For this, my Turkish knowledge is over and I think uh, my English will definitely will be uh, better than my Turkish and <laughs> your English is good enough to understand me. So we have a discussion today about how to improve the quality of sport events. We have here the guest, uh, Görkem Donmez from uh, Gloria Sports Arena, general manager. We have Joshua Unimna Ugbe from uh, Arrange Friendly Com. And we have Kadir Furkan from uh, what is the pronunciation? Yeah, reg from Regnum Kaya, Re Regnum Kaya uh, Marketing and Sales. If I'm right. My name is Alexey Zhukovin. I work as a deputy CEO for infrastructure in uh, Botiv Football Club in Bulgaria. Before this, I was working 20 years in the stadium and football industry. I've opened four big stadiums, overall capacity like 150,000 spectators, had an experience of FIFA World Cup, UEFA Euro and Champions League matches. So we start with, uh, with the quality. What is quality and what is event? Everyone knows that uh, making events is very easy. It's like riding a bicycle, but bicycle is burning and you burning and everything around is burning and you're in hell. So uh, everyone who was making the events understands it's, this concept and uh, went through, through this many times depending on the experience and the scope. Um, so uh, can you briefly tell me uh, about your experience in the event business? What kind of events you were organizing? and uh, what helps you to, to do quality events. I think we start from Gürkem. First of all, thanks for the organizers and thanks for the spectators who is listening to us. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm working as a general manager of Gloria Sports Arena and our complex is working as the largest performance center of Europe right now. At the beginning of the story, we started with some sport events with the big names like Ironman for the first three years, but then we start to organize our own events with Gloria Cup names. For basketball, volleyball, athletics, we did already. For canoeing, we did. And also we had dance competitions, so we have some sport events already in, in, in our complex and we are working for more. What is quality of the event for us? Uh, we are trying to have as much as possible multinational participation. We are trying to have from, if we are making an individual sport event, we are trying to get the athletes from top 10 in the world or top 20 in the world. So we are, we calculate our success for the events, how many, from how many nationalities we have athletes or teams and how many uh, different kind of sports events we are able to host. We are calculating the quality of the event according to these numbers actually. And, but of course, to organize an event, it's not, a, it's not easy to organize just with a single leg, just with an event. Of course, you need them partners like federations for the old sport events, which we are trying to organize as individually. We are also getting support by the national uh, go sport governing bodies. So we are trying to get support from the federations with the, all the rules and we are trying to follow them. So I think quality of the event uh, is going parallel with the, from how many nationalities or from the which level of the teams or athletes you are having for your events is my answer. Uh, thank you very much. Joshua, what makes the football event successful? How do you think? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Mr. Joshua. I am the senior sales consultant with arrangefriendly.com and uh, basically to answer your question what we do is directly with uh, arranging professional teams 
to be able to match make between themselves as well as uh, come together in one venue to be able to generate an atmosphere for them to put those events together. Like he explained, uh, organizing an event is usually not something which comes easily, but in time, if uh, you have the right management, the right plan, and you have the right people around you and the support as well as sponsors, uh, it makes it much more easier to move. So to answer the final part of your question, to get sports and uh, football events going, it will be very interesting if the support is good and the sponsors as well make it perfect. That is my answer for you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, Kadir, what can differ from one event to another? And we say, okay, this event was good and successful and other event was not so good. What are the small details or big details you have in mind or from your experience, how to uh, measure the quality and how to reach this excellence from, from the others? Yeah, thank you so much to everyone. And first of all, I would like to thanks to Mr. Behic and Dede to give us this opportunity. And thank you for your question. Uh, my name is Kadir Furkan. I'm in charge of uh, sports sales in Regnum Karia. Dragon Karia Resort is also offering us some sport experiences to its, its guests, like in the golf industry, in the football, um, in the tennis, and such and others. So, for example, we had host uh, the, the Turkish Airlines Open Golf Tournaments, the many football camps, the friendly games, but here, uh, some small details that differs um, the success. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about it. In Turkey, especially in the destination of Belek, it's going to be a brand year by year. And all of that, our competitors also trying to offer their best to make this destination the top. On that point, in my opinion, that we are offering the best services as all hoteliers to our guests. The only thing, if there is sun and over us, everything is successful during our events. So that differs because the others, rest of them are handling by the hotels by successfully. Okay, I see. So we can close the panel and say we rely on the sun. Yeah. Um, as I understand your position, a lot of uh, documents, regulations and uh, agents say, says you what to do, but very few says how to do this. Uh, as we see for recent years, football industry goes uh, a little bit slower than the software development or IT infrastructure development with all these modern frameworks which everyone is trying to use but uh, very few people uh, understand how to use these frameworks. And for example, for now we have more than 1.2 million certified project manager professionals with uh, additional certificates, with uh, um, very, very many degrees of this certification. So we can speak about the project management industry, which is totally not connected now with the football business and event business. We cannot uh, find the document which says how to organize the proper event. We have a lot of regulations, we have a lot of um, demands from the team, but nobody says to industry how to, how to do the things. This is very important because the, every match we can say it is a project. Uh, this is the data from uh, 2018 uh, FIFA professional football report. So we have uh, around 4,000 professional football clubs and we, with licenses all over the world. So uh, if we have license, we can say that the human resource criteria also, <coughs> also can include the project management certification because um, if you're organizer and you are not UEFA or FIFA, you just, let's say, league or federation who, who's in charge, every club is different, every league is different, every country is different, and there is no framework uh, in, the, in the football industry which help us to to organize these things. Um, so, uh, we have different phases of uh, 
let's say, event project management. You start with the traditional, with uh, these Gantt diagrams, with resources, beginning and ends, and all this. If you have uh, one single project, it is okay. But if you want to develop, you go further. You create the checklists with the timings and responsibles. And some things cannot start before you put a tick to, to the previous things. Uh, this is okay, but with checklist and project, you cannot control the quality. We need to organize a successful event. So during the event, we need to make a log of issues and incidents. And after the event, we need to analyze the, the log to make some actions to prevent this happening in the future events. Because the quality control and quality event is the cycle and every iteration need to be uh, more successful than the others. So with this approach, you go to quality control. Uh, if we consider the match as a project, we have traditional project management phases like initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and control. Uh, have you ever been thinking uh, and using in your activities some of these uh, artifacts like uh, KPI uh, or objective scale result metrics or dynamic re reactions plan about all, all the events you've been hosting. Georgen. As a hotelier, I think it's the same for Regnum Carrier too. Uh, with our quality management, we have some, ki some kind of KPRs to follow up and also for the department by department or person by person, we have some uh, quality management systems to follow up. So according to that, yes, we have. But event-wise, I will, I will say honestly, we don't have. Because what we are trying to do is we are trying to make events with the teams who is choosing our destination for sport tourism. And with this support, with these events, with these friendly games, matches, organizations, we are trying to have more attention in sports world as a destination. So on one hand, your answer of your question is yes, we have as a hotelier, as a quality management system, but event-wise, on our side, answer is no. Well, uh, as you know, currently we are in a digital system and with Arrange Friendly, uh, we try to incorporate the landscape from the digital side. Therefore, having this algorithm set up, which allows teams, even though they are amateur teams, professional elite teams, to be able to register on the platform, it takes away the avenue for them to go through the hassle of trying to fix a place for the events to take place. We control those using uh, the subjected algorithms and professionals who work under this uh, team for Arrange Friendly. And in continuation with that, we also get in contact with some of the hotels, like he explained, because they don't have everything in compiled uh, avenue for them to be able to use because for them it's more like a, a destination site so we also help to contribute to that side which they are not able to push on the right hand side is this the, uh, is this a two-way connection for example the team gives their requirement for the match like a dressing room equipment like how many kilos of ice they need uh, for example a warm-up area of something like a warming up machines and, and, and everything can they uh, formulate the service level agreement with you as organizers and then after you deliver the event, you go through this with the team and said, okay, we delivered this, 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 this went not according to the plan and we will work on this in the future. Yes, for us, what happens with Arrange Friendly is uh, if a team decides they want to match make and have a team camp, for example, say in Turkey, uh, all the team needs to do is to register and sign up to our platform. And when they sign up on our platform, they can choose anywhere in the world they would like to have this event taking place. And also on our platform, we have lists of also teams that are provided that are also looking for other people to match make. But when the match is already made from the platform, we take the extensive extension now to connect with those uh, facilities in those particular countries they want to have this event done. 
So within this range, it's a collaboration not just only from our own side, but we also share information with hotels who are also interested in uh, having this kind of events held in their locations. Okay, thanks. Kadir, you, you know the industry from, from deep from the roots. How many teams approximately comes to this area for the training camps? How many matches do you have uh, in, one, in one season? Um, actually, it was a nice question because uh, in recently we had a research about these results. Uh, according to the numbers that uh, we found, about uh, <clears throat> football camps, I will start with football camps. Actually, um, usually these football camps and training organizations are happening at the first quarter of the year. And almost Antalya is hosting per year between one and a half and two thousand football team, which is equal to sixty between eighty thousand football player per year. About a friendly game, um, we also found that result that each football team is playing average of minimum two between four friendly game while they are here. Doesn't matter are they staying three day or four or five. So recently that we had these results in our research. Thank you for this valuable data and research. Um, it can be found somewhere in the internet to download. Uh, we haven't shared this detail yet, but if you email me, I can share everything with you. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. So next important scene for the event organization is communication. It can be one way, creating the artifacts, telling the people what to do. It can be two way, uh, holding the meetings. And it can be the other way when federation or somebody gives you the regulations and tells you what to do. So uh, uh, my, qu my question is for Gurkan, do you use some kind of uh, documents to, uh, to make the event like uh, regulations what what do you have for the for the training camp what do you have for this competition In, internal one or you use external one like uh, organization framework we have uh, as far as we, we are a sport complex we have our own protocols for the follow, to the fo to follow up for the events but of course it's more important also um, supporting your question previous question event organizer is very important part of all the events because yes as a hotelier we are the host we are trying to give services we are trying to make everything possible for the teams but with the event organizer with the agencies or fifa match agents this kind of event organizers are really important for us of course we are taking their support with their knowledge but the main thing from the uh, governing bodies sport governing bodies from the federations all the regulations when we are holding an event when we are trying to organize an event we are trying to take official regulations official rules by the federations if it's a basketball event we are trying to use fiba or euroleague rules if it's a football event we are trying to have uh, fifa or uefa rules with the turkish football federation support of course in turkey or basketball federation support so we have our own regulations or protocols to follow up but as a official rules and everything we are trying to get international sport governing bodies uh, thank you very much joshua what about your platform uh, uh, which documents and artifact do you use to make the the match friendly happen? okay for arrange friendly you know there is no restriction because uh, we arrange games all around the world and uh, like he rightly said there are different policies for every country depending on how games should be held and the rules you have to follow they have the fifa pro uh, licensing rules for example depending on those games that we are hosting and first of all when we have a match making between teams in a location say turkey we make also the connections with those uh, hotels where the team camps will be held and they also share with us what the rules and regulations are within their own country but already they have the certifications to be able to guarantee the games to be able to hold all the events in that particular location so 
For us, basically, our policy only work on the rules of getting them to the place of the event and making sure the event is successful. But with regards to certification, with regards to policies, mostly the countries that we go to vary with those policies and we abide by the rules that they give to us to follow. Okay, I see. Uh, Kadir, what kind of meetings do you usually have to, to organize uh, something? What is the schedule of these meetings? How much time it takes before the event? And how, how many meetings do you have uh, for, for one event, let's say? Um, actually, <clears throat> I split that events into two. So the internal ones with our team and the others with our partner. Uh, during the process of organizing one event, of course, there are uh, a lot of meetings and a lot of discussions uh, before you start the project. But, for example, when you get some offer, you start by discussing the prices, drink the confirmation, and such a um, process places in the stage, you are having a few meetings in advance. After that kind of confirmations and the other things, if you are really going to start with that project, if you're going to run, you're starting uh, another meetings, the internal ones, to explain what to do, how to do, and when to do. And when you highlight such a details, <clears throat> and when you match your team with your partner and who runs that project, it's almost uh, having minimum eight to 10 meetings and many phone calls and many emails, but uh, if you get used to do it, it's being more easy, event by event and organization by organization. And the quality improves as well, event after event. Yeah. So to, to organize nice event, we need to think about the scope. For everything, if we speak about the football match, we have very, very, uh, but let's say broad amount of functions we need to cover. Um, this is, uh, l let's say, for, for the top match, I presented on the screen, like facilitation, flow management, safety, security, transport operation, and so on, so on, so on. Um, for, for the friendly matches, we use very limited amount of functions, and uh, through the meetings you mentioned, uh, we connect the different functions to avoid the gaps, and then we create the documents and organization framework to, to have this event nice and according to, to service level which was promised to, to the participants or to the federations or, or by, by everyone. Okay, next important thing is uh, staffing and uh, human resources. Um, we all know this feeling after the event when you're totally exhausted, you have the, the, the burnout, you're very tired of these phone calls, emails, meetings, and everything. If it's a uh, two or three days event like, uh, like this conference, I can understand what the, the organization team <laughs> will feel um, after the event. Uh, and <coughs> according to the graph, which is uh, presented by uh, Project Management 2 uh, European Framework, the effort of the organization team is totally different uh, between the event management and let's say software development. You have your peaks in the executing and it's very high and it's very intense. And if we have a cycle of events, the peaks are going non-stop and the staff just burning out and trying to change the job, trying to change industry, that I'm fed up with the event. If you, if you don't have this special operational mindset to do your job, uh, like invisible and efficient, uh, day by day is the same scene, the same regulations. It is very hard to, to the staff member to, to cope with this, to cope with this intensity, to cope with this. Um, regarding the staffing, what is important uh, qualities, what is important competences of uh, event staff uh, do you think? Let's start from Gerken. Well, quite, we are quite lucky with that because uh, all the hotels around the region, all in Antalya Belek region, all hotels has a good quality of stuff. So with all the stuff, everything is possible. I, I say every time to my team, we are a team. We are also working just with the athletes 12 months long with, from so many different sports, 
from so many different nationalities, but we are every time with the athletes. So we are trying to, I am every time reminding them, we should act like them, we should react like them. Because if you, if you have good discipline, if you have good motivation, I think everything is possible. Generally, we are using our own uh, employees, our own team members, our own staff for all our, all our events. But of course, when we are organizing a big events, we have also uh, volunteers. I think volunteering is a very important part of the, any event. Uh, how much support you get uh, from the local uh, people, it's more supporting, of course, on the way to success of the event. So, as I said, we are using our human resources by our own, but also we are getting support from our event organizing partners, agencies, uh, as well as volunteers. Uh, have you been thinking about the uh, quality of a temporary staff and the amount of uh, control measures, regulations, training need to be done to, to have the quality you expect because some of the temporary staff you invite into the event just coming from the street, uh, let's say do their role and then go out without any quality assessment, without, without anything. What things do you use to first uh, measure the quality of the temporary staff of the event and then uh, what do you use to Im increase the, the, the quality of the temporary staff? Uh, according to our quality management system, we have ongoing uh, lectures, ongoing uh, educational programs for our uh, own staff, uh, also with the uh, uh, different, to who, who would like to learn the different language we are supporting. Also, we are having uh, internal and external educational programs. Uh, so we are following so many procedures for our staff. Uh, even uh, our management team, not just for the staff, ju not just for the employees, also for the uh, managers or directors, coordinators, we have ongoing educational programs to keep the service quality level every time up. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joshua, for the match organization, do you have the special unit which uh, coordinates the team, which coordinates all the functions just like a one window uh, with all the problems, just like, you know, Javi Javi on the football pitch to, to, to receive the ball and to give the ball as quick as possible. Okay, for Orange Friendly, as a team, we see ourselves mostly as a family. And you know, when you come together as a unit, in as much as we outsource, uh, dealing also working with hotels, we collaborate with them. We also see the outsourcing uh, aspect, which we take in also as a family. If they are a family, they become a unit. And if we are a unit, the communication aspect starts from there. If it is well organized from the beginning, uh, being able to solve any issues that happen during this sport event uh, will not be a bigger problem. It's only a problem maybe when you go to countries, for example, where you don't speak the same languages, but the lucky aspect is with a country like in Turkey, uh, most hotels kind of provide maybe translators to you to be able to help out with whatever issue it is. So this is the best I can say so far. Thank you. Uh, Kadir, what do you think? Uh, is the uh, project manager's market, labor market, is good enough for football events or sport events? We have more than one million project managers in the world. What do they need to be integrated to football industry? And for us, like uh, football organizers, it is easier to get this stuff from the market, but with limited functions and with additional training. So what quality will help, let's say, normal project manager from a software development without these peaks, without this sleepless night and everything? What will help this uh, stuff to be integrated into football events? Um, actually, uh, I don't have enough experience that much as my friends who are sitting next to me, but I can truly say that um, that many, many, many project managers, project uh, executives are who is coming from the sourcing of the football. For example, the many of um, the project managers in the territory who is in charge of the football operations and the sales in the hotels, in clubs, in the companies, 
as I seen, um, they're coming from football industry. Like while they're playing a football when they're young, for example, for a time they have been a referee. For example, Mr. Gurkham, he's a general manager of really nice sports hotel with full technical equipment. But I, I know and I heard him that he's doing this sport job many years. So, in my opinion, uh, to integrate that project, probably you should have experience before in your history. And as I have been, I have been also playing football. When you have passion to that sport, you easily doing that things on the business side instead of playing football because you enjoying it as well. It makes you satisfied. Does it sometimes make you blind about some operational issues or excellence in quality? You try to uh, use your passion and then, you, you know, in football you run too much instead of just uh, open yourself into free area? <laughs> yeah, actually, you are right. It's a really nice question. Sometimes uh, I'm getting tired of running, but... Um, Sometimes you don't have someone in the bench. You should run more. And by the way, you don't have change limit. So uh, you can have support from your colleagues. So in that case, it's easy to stand up by holding hand by hand. Nice. That's why we need a framework to, to reduce the running and to increase efficiency and quality. Um, how, how can we do this? We can use different tools like digital tools uh, for the quality control on the event. For example, uh, new technology in the hotels and restaurants um, and it's now integrated into football like uh, digital badges who, uh, which records audio, connects with CCTV system and machine learning, squeeze the, the phrases, the prohibited words from there, uh, staff conversation and uh, actually uh, examines does the staff follow the script uh, which they need to follow during the event or even in the in the normal hotel business do you use these kind of systems uh, Gerkem? we don't use this kind of systems but I 100% support those kind of systems which Everyone knows right now, uh, during the, some sport events, even for football or let's say NBA is a good example of that. Right now you can hear all the conversations between the referees by the tribunes during the critical moments. So I think it's very critical to get that kind of information. But on, uh, on the other hand, we are hoteliers or we are event organizers. We are not able to get 100% uh, of these informations, internal informations. So from the staff, maybe, yes, it can be. But right now we don't use, uh, because of some rules, also uh, regional rules uh, by the human rights, you cannot get 100% of the information if you don't allow it to get it. So we don't have this kind of system, but as I said, yes, 100% we need it. But somehow, uh, uh, I can say in different parts, for, from the guests of the hotels. We are trying to use different systems, all hotels, which guests were in which restaurant, how many times, or in, in which part of the hotel, how many times. We can do the same for the sport events, but with the conversations and other internal informations, it's quite critical. That's why right now we don't have, but it, if it will be, it will help us to improve ourselves more. Uh, how do you think for for the sport events the secret customer is a nice concept to implement or, or no and uh, where to find this secret customer I think we have already <laughs> you never know secret customer when it comes uh, but we have uh, according to our quality management system we have uh, ongoing procedures with it as well we have secret guests, we, we, we have secret customers uh, coming following the events, organizations also during the season uh, by the services to check the service quality we are following. So, but for the events, uh, I think it's difficult to find on one hand. On the other hand, it's easy to find. 
So who is coming from the field, it will be easy to get clear information, like you, maybe. Every, everyone <laughs> know everyone know how to do events, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, if your question comes to yourself, if you would like to come to our place for the events, more than welcome. <laughs> Thanks, I will do. Um, Joshua, you deal with many football teams with different requirements. How do you uh, make the backlog of all the requirements? Because if uh, requirements keep on falling from the team to much organization, the cost uh, can go to the sky and you cannot be efficient uh, in terms of cost management. What yeah. system do you use to make a backlog of requirements and then make invoice for, for the team? Okay, basically for us what happens is we have the digital algorithm and on our platform, which is also a digital one, uh, it provides you the avenue to select the options of what you will like during the event and the planning for the locations. <laughs> so when you make those selections, uh, relatively more often than not, we get in contact with these venues to share with us what we call uh, the seller's price uh, for the host of this event within their locations. And our system actually attributes the cost for you to see even before you decide to say, I want to go for this event. So there are so many locations you can choose from on our platforms. And at the same time, uh, we don't basically look about dealing with the cost for you. The cost is already there. That's why it's a digital one. So we work like this. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Kadir. What system do you use for the task management? Do you, do you have this uh, electronic like a Trello or, or something like this for, to, to have all the tasks in one place and then distribute what is done, what is not done? Or you just use the, the piece of paper to, to write it down and, uh, and then cut, cut, cut? Um, to be honest, uh, we are trying to integrate our systems to technologic things to follow our tasks and to do this. But I will be honest. Uh, at the beginning, you said some traditional ways. Uh, I'm still following it. Uh, I'm a young guy. Normally, I, sh I should be following that technologic things. I'm doing, but I'm still using paper to follow my tasks and about what to do, what is the process, and we're using some of that famous networks like WhatsApp and the Telegram and such, such a platforms that we are using. We don't have any uh, application or the, some private platforms for us to follow what we do, what we are going to do and what's done and what's next. Okay, I see. So you don't have dedicated incident management system and you have WhatsApp group and another WhatsApp group, how to name it, how to name this WhatsApp group and then you make a vote for the, on the third WhatsApp group and everybody <laughs> knows what to do. Yeah, yes, <laughs> definitely, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it becomes too easy to manage. Okay, we are close to finish. We have our time limit. Uh, just a small question. What is the future of the quality events? How, how do you see this? Like, like an imagination, like a few, few words, uh, open question for everyone. I think everything will be more digital, as you mentioned to follow up all the tasks, all the procedures, all the protocols will be more easy for the people and also with the guest experience, with the fun experience part will be more interesting. As much as fun experience will be in higher standards, I think level of the events will be also higher. Uh, that's my thought. I think uh, the future has already started at Arrange Friendly. As you know, it's a digital one. Uh, events will continuously be digital in the future. This is what we envision. But in cooperation for the future to be very much successful, it will be great if uh, platforms such as Arrange Friendly and some other competitors can uh, get avenues with experts from the hotels like my colleagues here who share the same portal instead of uh, going through the hassle of most times you need to send out an email, wait for response and stuff to be able to get the event successfully done. Uh, if in the future a portal like this happens, you know you have a partnership with these organizations, then it will make life even more easier for people like us from Arrange Friendly. Uh -huh. 
Actually, I also believe that uh, we're going to integrate that technological uh, quality systems and the others to our work. But um, during our operations and all of that things, we don't see, but we use all of technical tools like cell phones in, in this century, in this um, 2020, after that year, uh, we start to use that apps like Excel after 2000 and after 2010's WhatsApp, the cell phones. And I think we are adapting ourselves automatically to, the, to that technology tools. And I don't know what's coming next, but uh, I think that we are on it already. So we follow in the trends, not making the trends. I remember when I was starting to organize uh, football matches, it was li like 2003, uh, and I had a big phone, uh, like a cell phone, and in the end of the day I was counting the calls and messages, it was like 500 per day. So my last, uh, my last event, it was two calls and one, one meeting protocol, and uh, everyone was knowing what to do without WhatsApp group. So uh, I think football industry and event industry, because of this intensity, can make these trends. And I think we need to seriously think about the framework, the management certification and the document certification to, to, to the successful event and the quality event. And it's how, how I see it. Okay, let's go forward. <laughs> Uh, thank you for very very productive discussion. I really enjoyed. Thank you. Thank so you much very for much. Us here. Thank you for being here. Uh, I wish to thank the organizers, the Antalya Winter League, the facility, technical staff, translation, uh, operators, sound guys, everyone. I really enjoyed being here. Thank you very much. I hope to see you next year.